Hi guys, welcome to the Laravel Studios. Let's talk more about a great networking tool called Retrofit, which is basically used for client calls in Android applications, both for JSON, which is the JavaScript object notation, and XML. Would have been wondering around uh, how to make pagination uh, in these in different uh, net network tools that uh, they are out there. You know, how can we create a list of over one thousand JSON objects? And uh, have them in a list view or a cycler view. Uh, that's where pagination comes in. You, know, you can have uh, a lot of uh, lists you need to visualize right there in the Android uh, Studio or in the Android application. How can you get to do that using Retrofit? Uh, so that's going to be the focus of this particular tutorial. And I'll be showing you on the, the basic steps on how to actually have pagination, how to call over 100. Uh, list items right there using recycler view or list view and uh, how to get them called you know, at the same time and it's not going to stop on the page we're going to use page header uh what we're going to be focusing on the git of api so that's just the api we'll be using and i will be using my github account whereby i have over 197 repositories uh to call you know that's alone can overload uh, a page so you are just going to have that in multiple pages so how can we have that scrollable you know and uh, if you can extend more from this uh, analysis you can add the next or previous button just to make uh, the course I'm showing you how to actually do this uh, in this tutorial so I'm going to move straight to the studio I have that the dependencies included retrofit converter JSON and uh, Button knife, you know, if you can notice, I have that in the dependencies. I retrofit, I have the converter. You can opt for the Google Code JSON, uh, which replaces the converter if not available. We have the jQuarting button knife and uh, the OK HTTP, which is like the interceptor you know, to actually make this work. We have the OK, which is for credentials, you know, probably you need to authenticate. And uh, if you are actually compiling for XML, you include this dependency as well but we are basically focusing on json uh what about we get to have the javascript object of the notation so that's the, the basis of this uh, application and i'll be heading straight to the layout let's get to see the layout that we have for this application the activity main which is the launcher ui is a relative layout just a list item you can replace that with the recycler but we just use a list view just for demo purpose and we have the retrofit pagination uh declared as a list I want to have a list of all repositories i have in my github account that's just it so you can have a full list over one and seven and i want them listed out i have the item which uh, basically picks up the name that's the list item pagination text as an id and that's the name of the repository you know each repository must have a name and uh we have the github pagination you know this actually uh helps with the Pagination still maintains the list. You can decide to probably uh, create two buttons, next and previous, and uh, you have that tied down to the classes. I will show you how to actually make that trick. But for this demo, it's like we're actually going to have all 170 or, or more repositories listed in the list. Let's head straight to the main activity and uh, let's see how we make different calls. We use the adapters. Which is the pagination list adapter we have a service which is very important and the generator and we have the github repo which is the pojo that actually saves the data and also the pagination item you know and the link utilities these are all other classes we'll be calling right inside the main activity i'll be shedding more light on their uses the first now uh, we have the adapter the pagination list adapter and we have the list which is being converted to an array list uh, that is actually pointing on the pagination item module. Let's get to look at that right there in the service. Uh, the models we have the pagination item uh, model. Uh, this actually is a set and get, but we have the pagination item constructor and the get ID. We set the ID, we get the message, and also set the message of the set and get basically to the ID message. That's what we actually generated from the pagination item. Now we have the callback. You know, 
this is actually run at a background. You know, that's a callback we got from Retrofit, which Waba will instantiate the GitHub repo, which is a Pojo as well as a list item. Let's get to look at the GitHub repo. Uh, this time we're getting the ID and the name of the repository. You know, we are for the pagination and we are for the repository itself. You know, these are two things we're going to actually be inflating out uh, from the analysis now from the github repo we call the list which is the list item for all repository on response i uh, will get to look at the uh the base url and also the service generator these are all done right there in its different classes uh, we have the service generator uh, that actually uh, houses the base url you know this base url is like okay we must have a link to the github api Starts from https api.github.com as the api based URL, and we have to build that up by converting using the JSON, the JSON converter factory. You know, over here, uh, whereby we've actually included that in the dependency and we're passing the base URL. After that, we have to build this up. Uh, we can create the HTTP login interceptor to actually. Uh, authenticate and as well we need the service generator to actually call on there's one other uh, service we need which is the github service uh, this actually uh, is the get this way you actually passing the get the post the put the delete uh, these are all API calls you know that much manipulation of different API calls you have now we are getting can either get the users, the username, and the repositories. You know, this we actually add up to the service generator API based URL. You know, this is just like the shorthand, you know, and the continuous aspect is over here. This is these are what you get it, and you're going to call this repos or user method right inside the main activity, which actually points down to the GitHub repo, and we have for the paginate. You know, we are calling the uh, APIs twice. You know, the first is for the list of repositories, and the second is for the pagination that actually use the header because we're going to have next, you know, next to the next one, and you can actually move to the previous, which is being handled with the GitHub page link utilities. It is a helper method that actually uh, help us right there with the header. Uh, what about we have the header link, the meta way, the meta first, last, next, previous. The header last and next, you know, this is for the first, the last, next, which can come in probably 15, 15, or 10, 10. Depends on how you specify it. But uh, by default, it's going to be 10, 10. You're going to have a list of 10, you know, it's continue to have that. So you can actually split that up into different uh, pagination. Probably if you're using the web, you know, you have the web pagination. You can also have that in mobile. But we're just going to continue to have a scroll since we have a list view to actually show us over 100 at a time can have that done we pass the links from executed method right inside the github page links utilities it's a helper method that takes in the headers as its parameters and uh, it tries to uh, split them up into its different uh, portion the first the last the next and the previous in the if else statement if you notice you have that set up already over here for the path whereby you take in the relative value as its parameter so that's set for the GitHub links. We have the GitHub, GitHub links. We have the portal for the repositories, you know, and we also have for the pagination, you know, and we have the interceptor. Afterwards, we have the service that actually uh, houses the endpoint, you know, of the link, and we have the service generator that takes care of the base URL. Whereby you can convert either you're using XML, either you're using polyphonic custom converter, you know, I have that commented over here but we only need the json converter factory to actually convert uh, the json we are getting right there from the apis and uh, make it usable and readable so that's what all that is doing now let's head straight to the main activity that ties them up on response we have the list which is the response and the body and uh, we do a follow so this is the best way to actually get any list item response. Do a follow 
pass them into an array list. Most times, array lists are much more flexible than the list. You know, but the way you can easily pass them into an array list, look at this for loop. Now, this for loop says, this is a for each loop. You know, this for each loop says, for each body, you must have a repo. That's from the answer you get because we need the list of repositories. You must know the list, the kind of JSON or the kind of JSON you are getting. You know, you now use JSON to convert. First, it's coming from the JSON, which is the JavaScript. You use JSON to convert the JSON to a readable format. Now, we the body, the response we are expecting should be the list of repositories from one to one hundred and fifty-seven or so that I have. Now we need to add each one of them. That's you're going to have each one of them in a for loop. You know, the, for each loop continues to iterate until it gets to the last repo. And you need to get the ID. We need the ID while iterating, and we need the name of the repository. You know, that's the two objects we need from the JSON. We need the ID, we need the repository name. So in iteration, it continues to add that to the values. So these values contains on the list of all repositories in my GitHub account based on the service and the endpoint that I use, which is the link. Now we notify the data set change, which is the adapter. We need to uh, instantiate the adapter. The adapter is just uh, a class is not holding any value. It's a class that sets the value gotten from the HTTP link or the list. You know, you pass it down to the data. The adapter uses the POJO to set them to its appropriate text fields that you have that you've created right there in your layout files. So that's what the adapter does. The adapter doesn't hold on to values, doesn't keep them right there, it just set them. You know, it is a sort of helper class as well that uh, create the job of setting the value pass from the HTTP link. Uh, if it's a list, set them to its appropriate fields that you have declared in the XML. Now, the aspect we will need to look at is uh, this method called the fetch repository next page. You know, we are now trying to get other pages, not just one, because uh, once you call on the list of uh, data, you have a limit of what can be shown that's for a page. But now you need more than that page. You need to show all the data you have. You need to call the next page. So that's called on this method. This actually points to the service. Let's look at the GitHub service, which is the GitHub repo for the repository user pagination. You know, that's calls on that. Uh, so that's why we call on the GitHub page link utilities to actually make that happen. That's the class, that's the upper class I talked about that actually handle the next, the first, and the last. You know, that is needed. For the pagination. Now uh, we test the utility if it's empty now. If it's not, we, then you see we call the service, the repository for user paginate. We pass in the next. You know, that means we are doing the call twice. The first is the list of the repository, the next is for the pagination. You know, we need to get the next aspect using the headers. The headers. You know, if you are familiar with web applications, we use headers to make calls, to make HTTP calls. So we are actually using this headers as well to call the next page of the repository right there in your GitHub account. So you can actually use this with other APIs that have a longer list, more than 50, 100, 1,000. Definitely there'll be headers to take care of the next page. So that takes the care of that. And uh, we need to trigger this method, the fetch repository next page right there in the on -create. You know, if you notice, uh, we trigger that uh, right there here when we need to notify the data set change on each adapter. So after the adapter has been loaded with the first level, there will be a notify that you need to still load more. There are more to come. So that's what uh, these two chunk, these two lines are doing. To notify the adapter to make a change, uh, to make a refresh. And after each refresh, it calls on the fetch repository next page and passing the response. As this parameter, so you are making the calls second time, and this second time you are checking for the next header, which is the next page. So this method, this method is very, very important and it helps us to actually get that done. So now we'll be testing twice. We'll be looking at 
commenting out this uh, method and let's see what we get and let's uh, uncomment and let's see what we get so I will be able to actually understand what has been working on the, the, the show now we have the adapter set the main activity the manifest rather we still maintain the um, the manifest we know whereby we just include the internet uh, we can have external storage you know, read and write to external storage for other aspect of the code you know which we're still going to do more but for this purpose you only need internet which is going to actually make the json call from the network so that's that you know it's a very short and detailed way to actually get almost all data from uh, an API. You know, if you have an API of list of 1,000 of more than 100, you know, just having one page, just one uh, 10 uh, list is not too good. You are not consuming all APIs. For you to consume this, and you can even do a UI trick with this. Uh, create a button that's for next or previous. You know, you can start to trick with this method. Way to do that, you need to uh, tweak this method uh, on the on the call of each button, you know, this method will be triggered instead of you uh, changing adapter. You know, instead of you trying to to notify the data set change here, yeah, uh, you can decide to attach that to a button click. So in, in the next button click, it gets to the next, and you continue to document and increment for the next document for the next one. So that's just the trick you can do to achieve that. But for this point and uh, this level, it's so good to go. Uh, you have your list populated. Let's get to look at this right there in the emulator. I've already run that in the emulator. And we have something like this. I have over 157 uh, repositories. And if you notice, you need to have them scrollable. You, know, you can see the list of all repositories right there in my account. You know, The last is what we'll try to notify here. It's called the YouTube video. So let's get to comment out this uh, method. And uh, let's see what happens. Now I've commented out the fetch repository next page. Let's see what happens. Probably we're still going to get the YouTube uh, video as the last of the list. So here we go with the application. Now we've commented out the fetch rep no, repository next. So let's get to see the last on the list. We have YouTube as the last. Can you see? We have a short. We only have the Android flexible space toolbar scroll as the last. In the list of the repository, you can see we don't have, you're not having all that uh, data. You know, you can see that we are missing out something. You're not having preview more, you know, lists right there. So at this point, this method, the fetch repository next page, is very, very important and very useful to have a full list of all your JSON objects. You know, so let's comment that out. And you can, as I've said earlier, you can that, tie that up to the next previous page and the increment and decrement while calling each one of them. So we are straight this out to actually get it back to its previous state. So here we go. Uh, let's get the scroll flowing. Can you see? We have all the repositories called. So that's just the difference. Having your pagination using retrofit. Retrofit is so flexible. It's a modern way of making the network calls for your client application in Android. You know, start to use retrofit get acclimatized with different aspects of it and it's quite useful. Leave any comments from the, uh, the, the comment section of this video. I'll be right there to answer any of your queries and uh, we implore you to always stick by with the Laris Studios. Don't go anywhere. Please subscribe to my channel. Have a pleasant time. Bye-bye.